Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I am a field person for Consolidated Fruit Packers here in the Okanagan. Um, today I am going to be talking to you about cherry fruit worm. Uh, this is not a new insect. Uh, generally, it's an occasional pest, but we are seeing flare-ups uh, in areas of the Okanagan in conventional and organic cherries. And so I thought it was worth revisiting it, uh, as well as uh, cherry fruit worm has been added to the um, export program uh, systems approach for the EU. So I'm going to discuss life cycle, life cycle damage, uh, the export program, monitoring tracking, as well as management. Let's go. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, the cherry fruit worm is considered an occasional pest historically. Um, most of the products that would be applied against cherry fruit fly and leaf roller in the spring also controlled cherry fruit worm. Uh, but in some cases, due to products being specific only to cherry fruit fly, like GF120 um, was used, or spring leaf roller sprays were missed, um, we are starting to see flare-ups of them, and they are showing up in the fruit and in poor samples. Uh, so cherry fruit worm is a caterpillar. It's uh, part of the Lepidoptera family. Um, it also attacks blueberries. Uh, they were found in blueberries on the coast in 2011, um, and I think it is considered a primary pest of blueberries now. Um, the CFI assessed the results of their cherry port samples associated with export phytos that they do. And what they found is 1% of the lots that were um, uh, rejected in port samples, of that 1%, 50% was due to cherry fruitworm. So, because of these results, the CFIA and uh, the Ministry of Egg conducted a survey to assess uh, cherry fruit worm population in the Okanagan. Uh, because of these um, results as well, they really wanted to figure out, like, how, why are we missing this? Um, the goal was to determine uh, seasonal life history. When did they emerge? When did they fly? And then ultimately, so we can help better time our chemical products. So life cycle and damage of cherry fruit worm. Uh, there's only one generation per year. Uh, they overwinter as mature larvae on the bark and then they pupate in the spring. Um, the atom moth then emerges around early June. This is dependent of course on the season and how warm it is. Um, eggs are laid individually on the fruit. Um, this usually happens over a couple days. And then the eggs will hatch in about seven, 10 days, and the young larvae will bore into the fruit uh, and tunnel to the pit where they develop probably over about three weeks. And while they're in the fruit, of course, they're eating and they're leaving this frass inside of the fruit. And of course, frass is insect poop. Um, so they're gonna hang out there and they're gonna eat and they're gonna go through probably three to five in stars. They're gonna get bigger and fatter and, um, and then basically they're going to either come out, move to another piece of fruit, or they're gonna come out and they're going to go and seek hibernation. That's what it looks like. Uh, the moths are active in the evening and um, yeah, at night. So here's just a quick slide uh, looking at um, sort of the three phases. You know, on the one side we see uh, the entry or the exit hole, kind of a sting, almost like a coddling moth sting, except on a cherry. Um, then inside, when we open the fruit, you can see it chewing around in that sawdusty brown, that's the frass, that's the insect poo um, from them basically eating around the pit. And then that, that far slide over, if you look really close, you can see a mature larvae. And it is all, it's, it's got a black head and a pink body, it's, it's quite obvious. Here's a real close up of the cherry fruit worm larvae. So on the left, you're gonna see sort of a whitey pink with a brown head, that's a young larvae. On the right hand side, you're gonna see an older larvae, um, more pink with a black head, um, that's a mature larvae. And usually mature, they're about seven and a half to nine millimeters. Um, yeah, when they're quite young, it's, it's very hard to see them as they get older, you can definitely um, see them in the for example. Uh, here's one other larvae uh, comparison that I think is really good. Um, on the left-hand side with the blue arrow pointing down, uh, these are the caterpillars, right? Cherry fruit worm larvae, leaf roller larvae, sap beetle larvae. 
And, and then on the other side, you've got the, the dipteras, the maggots. So there's your cherry fruit fly maggot, there's your drosophila maggot. And you can see there's some pretty obvious differences in that the caterpillars are gonna have a, a head, a head capsule, and it's either gonna be black or brown, whereas maggots don't have an obvious head. Um, caterpillars have legs, maggots don't have legs. Um, and in some cases, um, like cherry fruit worm larva, they'll have what's called an anal comb and uh, the maggots do not have this. So there is some really obvious differences when looking at the uh, larvae. So uh, cherry fruit worm and uh, cherry export to the EU. So uh, previous exports from, the B, from BC to the EU included a systems approach, um, but it was fairly basic. It was involved port samples and issuing phytos um, pre-export. On September 1st, 2019, all the shipments of cherries uh, destined for the EU were stopped. Um, you know, that, was, that wasn't just cherries and that wasn't just in BC, that was, that was in North America, that was other commodities. Um, basically, the EU communicated that they needed assurance from BC that our cherries are safe and that we were not introducing any pests into the EU market. So, BC Cherries Association, uh, compiled information, provided that to the CFIA. The CFIA then went to the EU. And ultimately, after all that was said and done, we ended up with a trapping and monitoring program for cherry fruit worm that was added to our systems approach for exporting to the EU. And basically that involves now uh, cherry fruit worm weekly surveillance and monitoring. This is similar to what you may be doing with your, with your uh, China fruit as well. But there's a trapping program now. Um, there is no submission of records. You do not have to submit these weekly. You just have to do them. You have to date them. You have to record your information and then you have to have them available for review. Okay, that's basically how it works. If the BC Cherry Association or the CFIA ever audited or requested a copy, you need to have them available. Uh, the CFIA um, is talking about the cherry fruit worm trapping program. So a quick review of that trapping program because it is new to anyone who is exporting this year uh, to the EU. You need to have the traps out by May 4th. Uh, the weekly monitoring is going to start on a Monday, May 11th, and you will continue to monitor until you finish harvest. We are going to use delta traps, I'm pretty sure. Um, the traps are placed five feet into the tree and 15 feet away from the edge of the orchard and 15 feet away from other traps. Okay, that's really important. So if you have a calling moth, moth trap five feet away, you need to move your trap further away from that. Okay, 15 feet away from other, um, other insect traps. Okay, uh, you're going to change the bottoms and the lures every four weeks. And what's kind of interesting about this trapping program is we're not using a cherry fruit worm lure. We are gonna use a uh, false coddling moth lure. Long story short, there has been work done um, looking at cherry fruit worm distribution and they were using a cherry fruit worm lure and it just was not um, able to uh, attract the cherry fruit worm males in. They found that false coddling moth did a much better job of it. So plain and simple, that is what we're using, false coddling moth lure, if you're wondering. Um, and we do not have false calling moth in BC. So what if you find a moth, okay? So you're gonna hang the moths, you are gonna be monitoring for them. What if you find something in there? Um, so according to the guidelines for export, when one suspect cherry fruit worm moth is detected in the trap, you need to spray an effective insecticide for control as soon as possible, okay? Um, Cherry fruit worm moth is smaller. Uh, it's a smaller moth. So let's say if it's nine to 11 millimeters uh, wingspan open, uh, the calling moth is like 10 to 20. So it's probably half the size of a calling moth. Um, it's got dark gray and black stripes across the four wings. So those are the upper wings you can see and the lower wings are um, sort of a lighter gray color. So those are sort of those identification features. If you need help with identification, you can certainly, um, if you're part of the export program, wrap them up with saran wrap, take them to grower supply, label them properly. Same, same deal with your China um, traps when you send them in for identification or talk to your field service or consultant, see if we can help you as well. So 
what it comes down to basically is we are going to treat this like a leaf roller, okay? Because basically there are no products actually legally registered for cherry fruit worm on cherry. So um, basically products registered for leaf roller on cherry should control cherry fruit worm. That's kind of what it looks like. Um, choosing more broad spectrum uh, products for cherry fruit fly and leaf roller will help to manage cherry fruit worm. Uh, don't miss your petal fall sprays. Uh, spray one to two times depending on the population, depending on the pressure. Um, you know, of course, once this worm gets into the fruit, you can't spray it out. Uh, so you need to be proactive before. Um, ultimately, I think as long as you are providing or applying broad spectrum products, uh, when a moth is present or through regular intervals in the season, you should be fine. You should be okay. And the EU requirements for export will be met. And that being said, there are MRL considerations. Um, so you want to be careful, especially with the EU that has lower MRL tolerances. You want to be mindful of the products that you're using and when you're using them. Um, so that's a little more specific. And I would suggest you talk to your field person or your consultant um, about that specifically. What products should you use early in the game? What should you use as you get closer to harvest? Um, yeah, and that's basically my presentation. So that's cherry fruit worm. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out and let me know. And um, yeah, I hope you all are doing well out there.